In this tutorial is use the Refinex GUI to set up a code file or export a code file that can be used for Markov Chain Monte Carlo sampling with the underlying Python package for Refinex. To start off with, I'm going to open a, a data set. Uh, let's load one of this one. So this is a deuterated polymer film on top of silicon. And um, so let's go in and start setting the model up. Its resolution is around 8.7%. Uh, you can fit the resolution, by the way, but we're not going to. I'm going to uh, fix the background and allow the scale factor to vary. If I go into the structure then, so this layer will be it's going to be our silicon dark side and in between the fronting medium which is air we're going to have a polymer layer. Our backing medium is uh, silicon. Uh, is silicon. I might just allow the backing roughness to say vary between one and five. Silicon dioxide layer to vary between say one and twenty-five. The roughness to vary between say one and six. Then our polymer film. Um, it's going to be around. What was it? I think about five twenty. Um, and its scattering density is about 6. Um, and I'm going to allow these parameters to vary between 1 6 for the roughness, for the SLD between, say, 5.6 and 6.6. .6. The thickness between, say, 480 and Five, five fifty. Okay, so once you've set up uh, this system, how you want it to be fitted, we'll add it to the systems to be fitted. So press. If you've got a selected data set, you just press this right button here. Uh, let's fit that data set to start off with. Okay, so these are the parameter values: five seventeen plus or minus. 6.9 and so on. So it looks as if we're not really all that sensitive to the silicon dioxide thickness. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, 25. We'll allow it to vary. Let's change the upper value to 50, even though that's much larger than I'd ever expect it to be. I wouldn't expect it. The silicon dioxide thickness to be say more than ten, um, but you know that's a, another matter for discussion, I guess. So once we're happy with uh, the model setup and it's in the list of data sets being fitted, what we do is we go model export code fragment. I'm going to save this code file on the desktop. I'm going to open it using a text editor. Just to um, just to see what it looks like. There you go. This is the, this is the code file. This is the um, the setup stuff here. Um, it's quite involved. Not really all that hu uh, human readable, but I hope to improve on that in the future. Um, if to then run it in a Markov chain Monte Carlo way, what we can do is we'll open up a, a terminal window, so you can use that the console on on um, Windows or a terminal in OS X or term um, just any old console window in Linux. Uh, we'll run it, and we get. The usage arguments here, if we just type, uh, we give the minus h flag. So we can uh, specify the number of walkers by using w, uh, the, uh, the w flag. 
the number of steps to thin the chain by to reduce autocorrelation, uh, the number of steps that each of the walkers take. And uh, if you want to know what the number of walkers is, it's well worth looking at the MC documentation. And you can also do parallel tempering here, um, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to um, start the uh, start the the sampling. I'm going to say that we want to thin by say 100. Uh, let's say 10 steps so that it goes a bit faster. That means that every 10 steps that the walkers take, you save a a chain. Um, and then I'm going to say that we want to do 10 steps. So in total, we'll have 10 steps saved to a file. And each of those 10 steps is separated by uh, 10 steps that aren't saved. So in total, we would have done 100 uh, steps through the um, or 100 advancements of the, of the sampler. And what we, what the total number we get out will, of samples that we get out is 10 times the number of walkers. So if the number of walkers is 300, we'll get a total of 3,000 samplers, or a th total of 3,000 samples. What you've got to uh, watch out for is that the, sa uh, the samples aren't correlated, which means that you do need to thin quite significantly for um, with MC. Typically I might use a, a thinning of 200, but for the reasons of time here I'm just going to use 10. Once you're happy with the command, we'll set it going. Um, if I go down look at the CPU count, you see that uh, the sampling is using all of the CPUs on my machine. Um, you can do this on a cluster and use MPI for a, a large scale uh, parallelization, in which case you have to adjust the code.py file a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's fairly, fairly straightforward. So when the code finishes, uh, to the output you get the uh, representation of the fitting system. So we see here that, uh, that our parameter uh, thickness, parameter thick for our polymer layer is 517 angstroms plus or minus 1.51. So to get that value of 517.156 and that uncertainty, what the software has done is taken all the chains, worked out the median value, and the median value is reported as the parameter value, and it's taking um, uh, a quarter, uh, not quartile range, a quantile range that is approximately uh, two sigma, dividing that by two to get out the parameter uncertainty. So it's like plus or minus 30, or is it 34% on either side of the median? And it does the same for all parameters. If you want to get have a look at the number of steps, we can uh, look at that in a text editor. So what we've got here is uh, a total of 300 walkers and seven varying parameters. So if I look at the number of lines, total number of lines in the file, there are um, a total of 10 lines. So the last one here is line, in the file is line 11, but we've got a header line. So we've got 10 lines corresponding to each of the 10 saved steps. And on each line, we have a total of 300 by seven values. So all these values here, uh, they would form an array that should be reshaped into 300 by seven. So that's uh, for each of, the each of the walkers, we have uh, seven values corresponding to the seven varying parameters. And this one here is referring to the number of temperatures, but we just used uh, a single temperature. So what you can do is you, uh, you can use all these values uh, within, uh, within the Refinex package to look at the spread in, 
reflectivity curves that are consistent with the data and the spreading structures. But that's, um, that's for a different tutorial. Um, but what, what's important is that you know how to get out these, these sample steps. And that, that's saved to a, a file that's in a similar location to the, uh, the code file.